force coupling calculations for electron atom and electron molecules. Yeah. Yes, uh, thank you, Leonardo Kennedy, for the opportunity to participate in this uh, workshop. Uh, this talk is based on a development that we done at Curtin University, uh, currently Curtin University, before other universities, now in Western Australia. Uh, the group of people involved are listed here. Most of you know Igor Bray. Uh, Chris Bostock is a postdoc in our group, and he is mostly responsible for relativistic electron atom scattering project, and Mark Zamet is a last year PhD student who is mostly responsible for uh, electron and positron scattering from molecules. I will talk about two subjects, electron scattering from atoms and electron scattering from molecules. Hopefully, I spent uh, equal time on both of them. So I start with uh, formulation of convergence close coupling method for electron scattering from atoms. So what do we do? We have to uh, follow a standard procedure. First, we have to produce a target spectrum. And we do this by diagonalizing target Hamiltonian in a Sturmian Lege basis. Sturmian bases are a very good basis because it allows to represent both parts of the target spectrum, discrete spectrum and continuum. So that's why this method works so well. Now, uh, the basis that we use Sturmian uh, Lege basis uh, contain two parameters. One is exponential falloff, and other is number of Lege functions that we use in the description of particular uh, diagonalization procedure. If uh, and it is interplay of these two parameters that is important to represent accurately the target spectrum. For example, if we you're interested mostly in a ground state, and if you're excited, low-lying low low excited states, you choose exponential falloff in such a way to describe uh, the extent of those states. If you're interested also in a high excited, um, highly excited states, then you have to choose the exponential falloff smaller to represent those states, and then hope that number of uh, Lege functions that you choose is sufficient to represent also shorter range uh, low line and ground state. Now, as soon as the target state is available, we run standard close coupling calculation, which in this case are uh, formulated in momentum space. So we uh, solve for the T matrix, and this is a uh, standard Lippmann-Schlinger equations. In this case, it's written up for uh, in case of Schrodinger uh, equations. But if we are not dealing with uh, virtual power, uh, power creation, we really have exactly the same formulation for Dirac equation. Now, if we drop this term, then we have uh, a first-order theory, like distortive wave theory. So we can run calculation in either full close coupling mode or distortive wave mode or first-order approximation mode or whatever you like. Now, to solve these equations, uh, we have to do partial wave expansion. So we go from 3D to 1D equation. Then we use a quadrature rule to, re uh, to uh, replace integration by basically uh, summation and uh, solve linear equations. And of course, we use uh, conserved quantum numbers, total angular momentum, total spin and parity in the relativistic case to reduce the size of the calculation to make it feasible. Now, electron scattering from hydrogen is a great one, uh, a great case where we can really test how the method works and what is required in our technique in order to obtain convergent result. Uh, what we know that if we do scattering from S state, from a ground state, normally in expansion of a target state, you don't need to go too far. Normally two or three is enough. If you are interested in quantities like total cross-section, totalization cross-section, and excitation of uh, low-lying states. Uh, number of Functions in, the, in discretization of every L uh, is not also too large, about 10, 15. In this particular case, for electron scattering uh, from uh, hydrogen totalization cross sections, the model that was used was 10 minus A. That means 10 S state, 9 P states, and so on. And maximum L is 3. And that was enough to obtain this very good agreement between theory and experiment. 
Now, uh, what about other atoms? Helium. Here uh, are the result of uh, 75 state CCC calculations and IMPS calculations compared with various experimental results for N equal 2 and N equal 3 levels. So that's, that is quite old results. And even in 1998, when this result was uh, obtained, uh, uh, there was a recommendation uh, by uh, Fritz de Heer that uh, it is really theoretical result uh, more accurate than experiment in this case. So what he suggested, take CCC and the MPS sum and get, and, and get average of it. So that probably produced for you the accuracy that is better than experiment that is available here. So that is about 15 years ago. I think it is, there is a case uh, to be made that that assessment needs to be made again. Especially now we can do calculation much more accurate, much more light, and, uh, and, and, and this is really something that we should uh, seriously think about. An example of what you can obtain is here. This is total ionization cross-section for electron scattering from helium. Uh, recently, there were experimental results to measurements 2002-2004 that demonstrated that their result about 5% less than previously used uh, data. So uh, we were interested to see if we can actually re reproduce those results. Our previous calculations were done in frozen core model and that is an example of the model uh, that uh, we run uh, uh, more, more recently, but is similar to what we've done before. So the model used 15 Lege function, 15 minus L model, L max 3, to, meaning only up to F states, and that is enough to obtain convergence. Only frozen core configuration, 1S and L. There is an error in uh, ionization potential, naturally, compared to exact one. And when you run this calculation, you obtain this green line which goes through the previous experiment. Now, if you start to improve your structure model and the both scattering model, uh, how you can do it? You still use 50 minus L model, go up to L max equals 3, but what you do is that you replace 1s, 2s, and 2p orbitals, not with uh, Short, uh, not, not, not with uh, wide range orbitals, but with uh, orbitals that have what Lege function that have large exponential follow four in this case. But if you do this and allow this type of configurations to be included in the description of the target spectrum, you obtain much better ionization potential, and of course much larger number of target states, and you obtain results that goes very close through new experimental values. So here we improve accuracy of our both target state, but also scattering description, because more channels, more various reaction channel is allowed. And we go very nice through experiment. And recent bisplan emetics calculations by Alec and Klaus agree with us is our result very nicely. So uh, the difference between frozen core model and multi-core model is about 4.5%. So what is the accuracy of the calculations that we have now? I think it is probably less than 3% probably better at higher energies, above 100 EV, and maybe a bit less at uh, lower energies. Now, let's look at some other transitions. So we look at, uh, at uh, total ionization cross-section. Let's look at other more, uh, very important transitions in electron scattering from helium. Uh, this is uh, the case for low energy excitation of two single pairs and two triplet S states. There were a number of calculations that were performed in uh, Belfast uh, 
starting from 5 state to 27 state calculation, then a new era when uh, IMPS type calculation will develop uh, cloud bar chart around 46 state analytics calculation, and more recently, uh, Alec and Klaus run 69 state baseline matrix calculations. So these results are presented here. So the question is, how accurate is this result? Can we get some estimate on accuracy? That is important. That is the most uh, important, probably, transitions in the electron scattering from helium. Why do you use for normalization of the data? So what we would like to do is to run systematic conversion studies in this case. So we start with frozen co-model. So we use 15 Lege functions, model 15 minus L. We use exponential falloff about two, and for one s orbital we use exponential falloff four that, that, that give us exactly one s orbital of, of helium plus. And this type of configurations are described uh, within frozen co-model. You can see that there is a significant drop from uh, uh, this planimetrics result to our frozen core results. So these frozen core results are converged in the sense that uh, well, all our grids issues being resolved, it's accurate in that respect. Number of states that are used to, discret to discretize 15 minus L is enough. We proved to ourselves that it is converged results in that respect. L max equals three, only up to F state. We demonstrated to ourselves it is enough too. So what is the error that this frozen co-model has? The error really mostly in the ground state description. So let's try to improve this ground state. So how we can do it? Well, I would like now to have exponential follow four large exponential follows, not only for 1s orbital, but for 2s and 2p orbital, and include all type configurations, all configurations of this type. So that naturally improve ionization potential, ground state energy quite significantly, and the result go even further down. Well, the next step is to go further and include more states more uh, one electron orbitals with a large exponential force to reproduce ground state more and more accurately. So in this case, we are really close to ionization potential. What happened that our result actually not going down anymore, but they jumped up. So what we have here in non-uniform convergence, that was a really surprising result. And that does happen quite often in uh, scattering calculations. And I think that we heard about this, that sometimes you improve something in a calculation that you get a so-called worse result. But in this case, we, had, we, we thought that we will be going down, further down, but it really didn't happen. Result jumped up. So what else do we do? What, what else we can do? We can improve this even further. Improve this by running now uh, all configuration up to n less than equal 4 with uh, the short range functions. And that improve ground state energy further. And you can see that uh, this red line is now really close to the previous green line. So we really obtain converged result or to some accuracy, probably about uh, um, 3 or 5 percent. Now, reduction from this plan and matrix result to our result is about 10% here. And here, in the maximum, about 15%. So that's quite a lot for the most basic cross-section. Now, I think that uncertainty in CCC result is about 3%. And that is really difficult to, to estimate. Why, why 3%? Well, I can look on the difference between red curve and the uh, green curve and say that, well, maybe if I improve the structure of my model and include more reaction channels, the difference will be even smaller than between that. But that comes from this a bit of a hand waving argument. Uh, this is uh, 
result for all n equal two states. And you can see that uh, the difference between this planar matrix result and our largest calculations, well, sometimes large, like here, and here, and sometimes is not. So convergence is really depend on the energy range where you look at. And for some transitions, it is, like for two triplet P transition, it is not that much, but for two single P, it is much larger. All right. I think that we already have a discussion on metastable states of uh, helium, so I just drop it. And what I would like just to say that this large disagreement between theory and experiment for metastable states of helium is, in my opinion, most likely experimental problem. That if you uh, look at other two electron atoms, uh, ions, for example, neon 5 plus, you will find extremely good agreement between theory and experiment for ionization cross-sections. And that agreement is quite uh, remarkable. We can even get this uh, structure associated with uh, resonance uh, 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 positions. Uh, the other uh, topic I would like to discuss is that it is really important to include continuum in the calculations. Now, here's an example of the strongest possible transition, resonance transition in metal vapors. Two calculations are performed. This one in the green are calculations that include only bound state. This one includes both bound state in the previous calculations, but also continuum. And you can see that only if you include continuum, then you get agreement with experiment. And the error is about 20 to 30 percent. So that is for the largest transition that is possible for electron scattering from atoms. So if you do, if you look at uh, transitions that are not that strong, you can have quite a remarkable uh, disagreement uh, in the case when you include uh, Interchannel coupling, and you don't include interchannel coupling. And this is the case of uh, integrated cross section for scattering on the ground states of barium uh, uh, to 65 D level. So, this scattering process can go as one step process due, uh, due to exchange scattering or as direct scattering using two step process. And you can see that close coupling results are much, much larger than first order results. And I think that we saw similar uh, outcome for the colonization perception that uh, Connor showed for a uh, uh, few lectures before. Uh, now I would like to just say, uh, show a few slides that discuss the importance of uh, accurate structure model in uh, scattering calculations. So this is resonance transition in Mercury, the largest transition. And uh, Mercury is very, it's it multi-electron atom. It's very tempting to model this atom as two electrons above the frozen core. If you do it, then you will obtain for optical oscillator strength for this transition, about 2.1. An experiment will give you 1.1. So the error is about 100%. But if you do scattering calculations within this formulation, that error will propagate into the scattering results. Now, there are two ways to deal with this situation. One is a proper way, and that's what Alec and Klaus did. Open 5D10 core, and you, after some work, that, that is, you know, can be quite uh, onerous, you will obtain results that will be in agreement with experiment for oxidative strengths, and you will obtain this uh, black line uh, on uh, this figure for integrated cross-sections. The other way that is much easier is to use phenomenological two-electron potential, which you include both in a scattering and a structure part. And that allows to reduce optical oxidative strengths from this value, basically, to experiment. And when you do this, 
you obtain result as in relativistic CCC or non relativistic CCC that goes basically very close to uh, this planar matrix results. So what happens if you don't do that? If you do not include two electron potential and run calculation with the wrong wave functions, like that follow from ex optical statistics range 2.1, you will obtain this curve. That is a CCC calculation that are not correct without two electron polarization potential. That is an error of about 100%. Now, what happens if you remove channel coupling in this case? So this red line is our first, order, uh, first born approximation result. But if you compare this curve, close coupling results with the wrong wave function, and this, you have an error about 100% just due to channel coupling in this case. And if you do calculations not in first border, uh, first border approximation, but relativistic distortive wave approximation or distortive wave approximation that other group did, uh, but different uh, wave functions of the target and uh, the way unitarization is applied, you obtain a bit different results. But both structure is important and uh, correct structure is important and the channel coupling is important for this transition. Now, you really have to work hard to get correct values for this integrated cross-section. You can basically guess it. And that is what uh, the method uh, due to Yonke Kim uh, uh, does. You can basically get born result with wrong wave functions and apply scaling. Scaling due to correct a selective strength to correct absolute value of cross section, and this part of this scaling procedure will uh, move the maximum cross section from a low energy to the correct values. Now, so what is the accuracy of this result? Well, I think that probably. If you compare ICCC and uh, uh, matrix calculations, the accuracy probably is within 10%. But it is something that we probably need to see it and work it out seriously. So this is a bit of a hand waving argument. Shall we adopt the here approach and get just a half of uh, the average of two best calculations? Well, I'm not sure about that. Maybe these planar matrix calculations are more accurate in this case, particularly at low energies, because it takes into account adequately coexitations. Uh, I have just a few moments to uh, say something about relativistic effects. Uh, I will uh, just run through these uh, slides very fast. It is not enough just to run Dirac uh, equation calculations. If you go up in ionization stages, at some level, at some stage, you really have to take into account relativistic corrections, quantum relativistic corrections to Coulomb potential. And that happens relatively soon. For example, for polarization of Lima and alpha, already for argon 17 plus, you have to include braid interaction in a scattering calculation <coughs> in order to get agreement with experiment. All right, so I just run this through, and I would like to spend the remainder of my talk on electron molecule scattering. Now, what we would like to do in our approach is to develop, a, well, to generalize convergence plus coupling method to electron scattering from molecules. So we want to develop a technique that will be relatively easy to apply to a particular class of molecules, right? Those class of molecules that are easy to describe using one center approach. What sort of molecules they are? Well, the atomics, obviously, and hydrides. Now, the technology that we would like to do, uh, uh, that we would like to use, is uh, exactly the same as what we applied for electron scattering from atoms. As soon as I say one center approach, we can practically apply everything what we develop for electron scattering from atoms to this particular type of molecule. 
So the procedure is a standard. You use LGA basis, you diagnose Tagis Hamiltonian, you obtain uh, uh, a spectrum of uh, a target of interest, and then you perform multi-channel expansion and solve a set of Lipton swing equations. Now, there are some difficulties in this approach compared to electron scattering from atoms. What are they? First of all, for target states, we have to go in case of, uh, in case of uh, atoms from, from one state with angular momentum L to L plus one magnetic sublevels, to L plus one states. That means that convergence of closed coupling expansion is much more difficult to achieve. Second, if you look at partial wave Lippmann-Schwinger equations, you immediately notice that uh, well, all partial waves of a projectile will be coupled. And these partial waves of projectiles also go from 1L to, to L plus 1. So it is a lot of partial waves that you have to couple here. Or for example, if you have projectile expansion up to L max equal 9, the number of uh, projectile waves will be about 100. That means 100 in one channel. Or well, try to run a converged calculations in the target spectrum when for every one target state that you add in multi-channel expansion, you have 100 channels. You will run out very fast for a general molecules. So it's very difficult to both apply study of convergence in close coupling expansion and both in partial wave expansion. Well, you can do a bit better if you in include, uh, if you consider mo molecules with uh, particular symmetry, apply point group symmetry. Uh, you can do much better if you work with diatomics, where you uh, have uh, uh, a conserved quantum numbers that allow to reduce size of the calculations. Now, in the remainder of my talk, I will show some results for electron scattering from H2+. Plus. So H2+, plus is the simplest molecule, and this proved to be possible to push it through instead of convergence study up to convergence. So that allow us to determine what to investigate, what sort of uh, accuracy we have in our calculation if we limit partial wave expansion or if we limit target state expansion. Uh, first of all, it is important to get correct target structure for H2 plus molecules. And here an example of what we obtain and uh, how it compares with uh, uh, experiment. And you can see that we do obtain very accurate ground state and excited state, you know, uh, sufficiently accurate uh, uh, target state of this uh, molecule. For molecules, one center approach is good to describe excited states, which are hydrogenic anyway. The problem li lies with one center approach in description of ground state, low lying excited states. And we, within our technique, uh, are capable to describe this. And we get correct energy levels, correct oscillator strengths, and correct static dipole polarizability. Uh, so in our calculations, we run expansion up to L max equal 9 in projectile. The first test that we would like to, uh, uh, to run when uh, we do this calculation and to demonstrate that in the combined nuclear limit, the code that we developed and the size of the calculations that we run for the molecule is actually capable of reproducing uh, electron scattering from helium plus results. So here we run atomic CCC code that is a solid line and on top of it these dots is a, a result from our molecular core. So that means that at least for combined nuclear limit we obtain convergence in a description of a, a uh, of a target, both in sense of uh, 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 the momentum included in a, uh, in a target state and discretization of the continuum. And also in a good agreement with experiments for this particular case. 
Now we run calculations for uh, two models, 351 state model that have 17 minus L Lege uh, functions uh, uh, model and 289 state, it has 15 minus L model. And you can see that agreement for uh, ionization cross-section and proton production cross-sections is very good. So we achieved convergence in our results for this uh, fixed nuclear uh, calculations. Now, what about partial wave expansion? Well, this is a tricky because if you include too many partial waves, you can very fast run out of space and cannot do this calculation properly. So here is an example of analysis that we did to demonstrate to ourselves that we actually achieved convergent result. Now, dashed lines are uh, close coupling of calculations. They, uh, the black line is calculations that use up to L projectile 9. Expansion of projectile up to 9. Red line, expansion of projectile up to 5. And this green line is expansion of project of up to five, but only uh, close coupling calculation we run for partial waves up to m equal two. Now you can see that uh, well, there is quite a significant increase in close coupling calculation when you increase number of partial waves. How can we obtain convergent results? When we apply analytical goal subtraction technique. Right. So we uh, use plain wave analytical goal subtraction technique, in this case for charge target, and hope that if we uh, have uh, continuum waves with sufficiently large angular momentum, plane wave or Coulomb wave will behave similarly. And we can test it, as we will demonstrate. <coughs> so now this black line with analytical goal subtraction technique became black line solid. Red line goes to this red line, and green line goes to this one. So you can see that analytical goal subtraction technique allow us to speed up convergence quite substantially. But there is naturally an error associated with uh, 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 going uh, to small values of L in the description of a project. Now, how important is it to have plane wave versus Coulomb wave top up? Well, this figure demonstrates that uh, we are capable to uh, obtain convergent result in sense of uh, this top up. Now, what this blue line is, is a distorted wave calculations that are run to L of a projectile equals 16. But basically, we can run distorted wave calculations as large as we like and obtain convergent result. So we are convinced ourselves that we took convergence partial wave expansions uh, properly. Now, what is important here is the channel coupling, the difference between what you obtain in distortive wave and in closed coupling calculation is quite large. It's about 45% intersection maximum. Now, the previous slide was about plane wave top-up. So we can do distortive wave top-up if you like. It's not uh, that difficult. And uh, you can see that if you do distortive wave top-up, and you can look at what happened if you run calculations uh, in such way that you do not include too many partial waves of a projectile? You can see that the difference between the largest calculation that includes up to L equal 9 of a projectile and the smallest calculation that use only up to two partial waves is about 15%. So you have to be aware that uh, cross-sections can be quite sensitive to the partial wave outcome. All right. So that is uh, so that result we are for fixed nuclear approximation. But if you want to compare with experiment, 
it's not really what we need. In experiment, H2 plus molecule is obtained in variety of vibrational levels. And this variety of vibrational level is quite large. Well, this is, in principle, described by uh, Frank Kendon factors, or can be measured in experiment. In order to model this, we use uh, uh, a derivative nuclear approximation that relies on the following undots. But you need to basically average kinetics that you obtain at various internuclear distances with the vibration functions that uh, you obtain for, uh, for, for a molecule of interest. In case of ionization, you have to uh, uh, follow basically this prescription. So this is ionization perception obtained in uh, fixed nuclear uh, calculations with different values of internuclear distance, and this is vibration level of, uh, the, uh, of, a, of a ground state. And if, uh, and if molecule is obtained in a variety of vibrational levels, then you have to sum ionizations ionization perceptions for different values of uh, vibration levels with given uh, weight factors. And what you obtain is quite different from fixed nuclear results. The error is about 15%. There is an alert for the link. Can you look at shelter? Right here? No, it can't. There's a alert. It can't. Oh, then do you know it? What are we doing in this case? This building is all this. Good. <laughs> <laughs> unless we go into the There's a large experimental error. <laughs> 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 okay, so I'm about <laughs> finished. The only figure that I would like to show uh, last is proton production perception. Here we again see a very large difference between fixed nuclear results and results that take into account the distribution of vibrational levels. And the error uh, can be about 100% difference between uh, this blue line, that blue line, and uh, black and uh, red line. Black and red lines are proton production cross-section for different distributions of vibrational levels, and control factors or that are measured in the experiment. So, uh, and I think that I better finish on this. And in conclusion, just to say that in order to obtain accurate results in electron scattering from atoms and molecules, you have to really rely on the accurate structure model. If you don't get accurate structure model inside, then you will obtain uh, something that is not really uh, relevant to uh, what, what you are calculating. For molecules, it is very difficult to run calculations to convergence in sense of target state expansion and partial wave expansion. There are errors associated with that. And that errors need to be taken into account somehow. For the atomics, in my opinion, we can push through this